Hey friends and welcome to another Misfit Makers Best Taste tutorial. This week we have something so cute and fun for you guys. Look how cute this gnome is. I cannot wait to get started with this tutorial, so let's go. All right, guys, so before we get started, just to let you know, all of the materials that I'm using in this uh, video will be listed down below. So we are going to start with a 24 ounce barrel tumbler from Makerflow, and we are using Sculpey modeling clay. This is an oven baked clay. You could use any kind of clay out there. There's air dry clay and there's many brands, but I chose to use Sculpey. Um, just watching some other creators that really work with clay all the time, this seems to be a really good clay to use. So I'm going to start by conditioning my clay uh, three to five minutes. You want to get it like a laffy taffy feeling, really soft, so it's easy to manipulate. So here I am, I'm just making a little nose, so I'm just making a little circle oval shape. Um, you can use as much clay as you want or as little clay as you want. I kind of just eyeballed how big I wanted the nose. Looking back, I wish I would have made my nose just a little smaller but he's still super cute. How big? All right, the next step is we are going to grab some more clay and we are going to roll it out like a snake so we can put it around our tumbler for the brim of the hat. I just used orange here. It honestly doesn't matter what color you use because we're going to paint it and then glitter over it. Um, so I'm just using orange. I'm making my snake. I think I made them probably around like eight or nine inches long. And I try, you really want to try to make your snake even all, like all the way through, okay? So you don't want like part of your snake to be really fat and then the ends of your snake to be really skinny because once you get it on the cup, you will be able to tell, okay? So try to make your snake even all the way um, all the way around. So here I am, I'm just placing my little snake across my nose, and then you see I'm just putting it all the way around my tumbler so they, the clay meets at the back of my tumbler, and then I'm just going to cut off the excess clay that I do not need. You can make your hat a shorter hat, you can make it longer, whichever you way you like. I kind of just aimed for the middle of my cup, um, because I just, I like the way that looks. For you. All right, so once you get rid of the excess clay, I'm just going to go in and kind of weld the two pieces together with my finger, make sure they are attached really well. Then I am going to go in all the way around my tumbler and I'm going to press my finger at the top of the clay and attach it onto the tumbler. So I am just taking a little bit of that clay at the top and pressing it into the tumbler. That way it can adhere really, really well to the, to the tumbler. So when we bake it, it doesn't just fall off. Um, here I'm using a little tool. I tried a bunch of different methods. I used different tools. I used my finger. I used, um, really, I tried a bunch of different things, okay? I think just using your finger, like I'm doing right here, works the best for me, but I'm not a clay professional, so there might be a tool out there um, that can help you, help you a little better. Not a Okay, so after you go all the way around the cup, making sure that you're adhering it really well to the tumbler and it's not going to slide up or down or go anywhere, then you're going to want to go around your tumbler and use your finger to smooth out your clay because after you bake it, there's no going back. So you're going to want to make sure you smooth out all those little fingernail prints, all those fingerprints. Um, any kind of lines, creases, etc. After doing that, then um, you're, it's time to bake. I baked my cup on a cookie sheet for 20 minutes, and the temperature was set at 
20. I know that's not what it says on the package, the Sculpey package, but this temperature worked really well for me and um, I di it didn't crack or anything. I am not going to adhere my nose onto the cup. You're going to want to bake that separately. So I just set the cup on the cookie sheet and the, no the nose on the cookie sheet separately. Here I am using another piece of modeling clay that I flattened out with my rolling pin, and I'm trying to cut out a little mitten. <laughs> now, I give all props to all the amazing clay artist tumbler makers out there because this little mitten was tricky, and you have artists out here like sculpting Picasso on a cup. Like, what? <laughs> so, but don't be too hard on yourself, guys. We are not clay professionals. Well, I'm not. You may be. So, if it's not perfect the first time, don't be too hard on yourself. Okay, so after you bake your tumbler, make sure you let it cool. Uh, don't burn yourself. After it cools off, I went outside and I spray painted my entire tumbler. It's this, I think I used like a weird gray color because my Rust-Oleum white wasn't spraying out correctly um, or it would be white. <laughs> so once your spray paint dries, I'm going to go in with my acrylic paint. You guys already know I love to paint my tumbler the same color whatever glitter I'm using. So here I decided to do my hat green. So I'm going in with my green acrylic paint. Um, after this dries, I will use the Mod Podge method and we will glitter it in acrylic. Okay, so honestly, your acrylic paint is not going to take that long to dry. I would not recommend using a heat gun just because you don't want to mess with that clay. You don't want to heat it up at all. Um, you don't want to take the chance of the clay breaking off. So just let it naturally dry 15 or 20 minutes and it should be good to go. Next, we're gonna go in with our Mod Podge and glitter it. Here I am showing you my other cute little gnome. I, like I said, I decided to make two because they're just super cute. I decided to add a little hat um, going off the side. All I did for the hat, guys, was I made a triangle shape a piece out of clay and I adhered it onto the tumbler um, at the very beginning and then baked it all together like that and then I added that little ball at the end turns out it turned out super cute I wish I would have done that on this one too because I love the way it looks at the I almost forgot an important step the beard how could I forget so I just went in and freehanded this. Um, if it helps you, if you don't feel comfortable freehanding a beard, you could cut out a stencil. Um, but it, it, just pull up a picture of a beard or use mine as inspo if you like the way mine looks. And um, just go for it, guys. It doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of just went for it here, and I think it turned out super cute. Um, I'm just using a pencil to draw the outline. Uh, that way, if I mess up, I can easily erase it. Cute. Okay, so after you have your beard all drawn on there and you are happy with the way it looks, we are going to go in and glitter the hat. The two colors I'm using are Mistletoe and Cleopatra, and they are both from Peachy Olive. I absolutely love Mistletoe. It is a super, super pretty green. 
All right, so here I am going in with my folk art paintbrush, which I will link in the description box below. I'm going in with my Mod Podge, and I'm actually doing it in sections. You could do the entire section at once, but Mod Podge dries really, really fast, guys. So I didn't want to take any chances. I didn't want to go back and do two coats of glitter. So I just broke it down into sections, and I'm glittering it that way. I want to go back. You will see me in a uh, second to grab my smaller paintbrush, and I am going to use my smaller paintbrush to go in and Mod Podge the rim of my hat, or the brim of my hat, I should say. Um, and just be careful, try not to get any Mod Podge or glitter on your other sections, but if you do, you can just take a baby wipe or a wet paper towel and go in and wipe that up. Don't forget to get underneath the rim of your hat as well. Um, a smaller paintbrush would be best for, for this. All right, I decided to do the beard white. Looking back, oh my gosh, I wish I would have done a red beard for like Leprechaun. I don't know what I was thinking, but he still turned out cute. So anyway, I went in with my white acrylic paint since I am using white glitter. Um, again, you guys already know me. I like to have my base coat down because with doing it this way, nine out of ten times, you will only need one coat of glitter. So I'm just using my smaller paintbrush, going in and painting the beard white, as you see. All right, and again, going in with my Mod Podge and using my Mod Podge as my adhesive for the glitter. Now, the white glitter I am using is called White Diamonds, and it is from Glitter Craze. White Diamonds, anything on the Diamond series is gorgeous, so highly recommend White Diamonds um, and having it in your collection. And can I just say, I have this video sped up. Obviously, I don't work this fast. I know y'all were thinking that, like, dang, look how fast she can move her hands. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but seriously, I wish I moved this fast. Think about all the things I would get done, okay? All right, and the same thing again. I'm going in with my copper metallic gold acrylic paint. Um, I always say this, guys. It does not have to be an exact match. Your base paint does not have to be an exact match of whatever glitter you're using. Just something close. So this is the closest color I have to, like, a gold. Um, so that is why I use this. But if you have a different shade of gold and you're using gold glitter, use that. You do not have to use the exact same color to get the same result. Okay, this is Cleopatra from Peachy Olive. I'm using my smaller paintbrush and I'm going all the way around the beard first and then I will do the rest, rest of it. Again, I did it in smaller sections because Mod Podge dries really, really fast, guys. But look how gorgeous this color is. Again, this is Cleopatra from Peachy Olive.
Okay. okay. It took about 40 mLs to cover the entire gnome. I am using my fast set from CCDIY. I absolutely love fast set, and you can find a discount code in the description box. You're going to want to mix your epoxy thoroughly, scraping the bottom of the container and the sides and scraping your popsicle stick off, ensuring that you're getting part A and part B mixed thoroughly, guys, okay? You do not want your epoxy to be cloudy at all. Don't worry about the bubbles because we can pop those with our torch, but make sure that it's nice and clear like shown. Okay, so we're going to go in. I... And being really careful, I'm not rubbing my cup really hard. My cup is sealed, so before I epoxied it, I did go in with my Rust-Oleum Clear Spray Sealer, and I made sure I sealed it really, really good. Um, I think I even sealed it twice. And usually, anytime I'm doing something with multiple colors, I'll seal a couple times to ensure that when I go to epoxy, that my colors don't spread or mix into other colors, okay? So I'm just applying the epoxy here. Again, it took about 40 mLs, and I did two coats of epoxy, okay? Two thinner coats of epoxy. You don't wanna add a super thick coat because the epoxy will start to pull up in certain spots, like the brim of the hat. The epoxy will pull up there, and it just won't look right. So make sure that you don't add like a super thick coat of epoxy, and just do two thinner coats instead. This won't look Oh my gosh, I am loving it already. These guys, these are so addicting. I am about to see y'all make gnomes. You're just gonna be, I just make gnomes now. That's all I make, just gnomes. <laughs> Just kidding, but they did turn out so cute. Okay, so after my two coats of epoxy, I am going to go in with my uh, 60, 80 grit sanding block, and I am going to sand carefully. I did clean up the rim with an X-Acto knife. You should do that after every coat of epoxy. And then I'm just going to go in and I'm going to sand the brim. My cup really isn't that bumpy. There's a couple little bumps on the rim where I'm sanding, but it really it really shouldn't be that bad. Unless you're using, like, a chunky glitter, you might, it might be a little bad. But these are finer glitters that we used, um, so really, there's really not that many bumps. But I'm still going to go in. I'm going to sand my rims. I'm going to sand the brim of the hat right here. And then I'm going to wipe it down with my microfiber towel um, that you can find on my Amazon shop. I will post that link below as well. Okay, I'm going in with my gold metallic Sharpie here, and I am just going to outline his beard so it gives it that little extra um, like makes it stand out more. So that is what I'm doing here. Now would be the time to go in and add any decals if you wanted to do so. So on my other little gnome, I added a bunch of little hearts onto the hat. Now would be the time as long as your cup is nice and soft. Smooth. If it's not smooth, then I would sand and add another coat of epoxy before adding any decals. Smooth. Okay, so you will hear, um, see here in a second that I decided to go in and glitter my nose for my for my gnome. I was not going to glitter it at first, but then after seeing the gnome finished with epoxy on it, uh, the bare painted nose just, I don't know, was throwing me off. So I went in and I mod-podged the nose and glittered it. 
I sealed it with my Rust-Oleum clear spray sealer, and then I actually UV resined it. So I used the UV resin from CCDIY, um, did a nice good coat, and then stuck it underneath my UV light, and then voila, I have my nose glittered and ready to go. So you can see here um, that it's all shiny. It looks like it's been epoxied, and then you can see the regular just clay. And I definitely just love the way the glittered nose looks, but again, whatever you prefer. So I did add a, I did make um, a four-leaf clover. Well, I tried anyway. <laughs> um, and a little tip, guys, because learn from my mistake. If you're wanting to make something like this, you're going to want to make it on the tumbler and then take it off the tumbler and bake it that way. I did not do that. I made it off the cup, so now it's not molded to the tumbler, if that makes sense. Um, so definitely bake it, or, or definitely make it on the cup, so that way you, when you go to adhere it to your tumbler, it already has that shape, um, and it will adhere nicely. So right here, I'm just using E6000 to apply my nose. You can use any form of adhesive here. You could even UV resin it, but I just decided to use my E6000. You can use any. Okay, so after letting my nose dry for about 25, 30 minutes, I want to make sure that E6000 dries thoroughly. Now would be the time that you would add any kind of pieces, extra pieces to your cup. But since I didn't do it the correct way and my pieces weren't molded to my tumbler, I didn't want to add them yet because if I did, what would happen is epoxy would build up underneath them and it would just, it would be a mess. So I epoxied my tumbler again after applying the nose onto my tumbler. I epoxied him a good, um, again for the final coat. And then I'm going to go in with my UV resin and my UV light from CCDIY, and I am going to adhere the four-leaf clover and the little hand as the final step. And he turned out so cute, so cute. I hope you guys enjoyed this basic gnome tutorial, and I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. There's so many designs, so many things that you can do with this, just like any all the tumbler designs out there. But I feel like this gnome, there's just so many things you can do. So I cannot wait to see everybody's and have a wonderful evening. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like what you see and make sure that you are in our group, Misfit Makers, and come check out our Misfit Makers Patreon group. Bye, guys. And